Okay, so I watched me some of this Jordan Peterson debate. Well, technically it was a debate on political correctness. But there's a part of the debate that got pretty famous and went viral for fairly obvious reasons. Uh, it was a fairly heated exchange between Michael Eric Dyson and Jordan Peterson. And the debate itself was on political correctness. But Michael Dyson and Jordan Peterson got into a very heated exchange within the context of the debate um, that went viral and got noticed by a lot of different people and has been commented on all during the week. And I'll have a link to both the debate. I wouldn't recommend you watch the whole debate. It's very long. Um, I'll have a link to both the debate and the part that I am referencing in the, in the comment section. Um, or not the comment section, in the description. So, what happens? Well, Michael Dyson starts to make this point. And it's really interesting because he, he starts to get really... He starts to get really street when he does it. He goes, why the rage, bro? You're a bad, mean, white man. And it really throws Jordan Peterson. The, the underlying premise is that Jordan Peterson is doing really, really well in life. The, the, the main thrust of Jordan Peterson's argument in the debate, and in general when it comes to political correctness, and as far as I'm concerned, this is inarguable, is that political correctness is to some degree poisoning the dialogue. Um, there are too many safe spaces and too many things we can't say to one another because, you know, we're too sensitive to hear them and you can't use this language and you can't use that language. Now, there is some degree of validity that, yes, there should be some words that are off limits. For example, we say the N-word instead of the actual N-word. That's out of respect for the African-American community, and I agree with that. You know, that word used in its context of hate is actually a little bit too toxic to be thrown around just so casually. It's very, very different when, when people use it in, in a rap song and they happen to be African-American because they're using the word in a completely different context. They're actually detoxifying the word in doing it. And that is a healthy response to a word that has that much power to cause destruction. But in the context of a debate or when you're on TV and you're, you're trying to use the word, yes, it is much, it's far more appropriate to say the N-word. doesn't cost you anything. Everybody knows what you're talking about. So sometimes politically correctness is proper within its proper context. It, it has validity. But oftentimes political correctness nowadays has gone just way too far. We have a new group of people called the SJWs, the Social Justice Warriors, and they're always lit up about this thing or that thing or this person was offended and that person was offended. You know, there's an offense du jour that happens almost daily in our culture. This, got, this, this person gets called out for saying that or that person gets called out for saying that or insensitivity to this group or that group. And one of Jordan Peterson's main um, claims to fame was fighting against that. And one of his main reasons that he fights against it is that he wants to have honest dialogue. So in the context of this particular debate, he was asking for clarification. He isn't denying the fact that he is perhaps a member of white privilege, but he was kind of saying, for clarity's sake, what am I supposed to do about it? And to what percentage have I, you know, have I gained by being a white man? What, to what percentage am I reaping the benefits of white privilege? And he starts trying to ask. It's not a very great point, to be perfectly honest with you. But the counter argument by Mike Dyson speaks for itself. Why the rage, bro? You're a mean, bad white man. Absurd on the face of it. And it underscores exactly the point of the people who are saying political correctness is out of control. I doubt there's any fair-minded person who isn't a racist who doesn't deny that it, uh, there has been a history of racism and that to some degree white people are the beneficiaries of white privilege. I doubt there's anybody who would, who would completely deny that. There's been a history of racism, especially in the United States of America. That's undeniable fact. And there is such a thing as white privilege. That is also an undeniable fact. But when we're having a conversation about race and somebody asks you, 
Not quite so clearly, but I think what he was trying to get at is what constructively are we to do about it? This is the question that I would present to the social justice warrior. What is your constructive, positive plan of action for a redress of grievances? Everybody understands that there have been historical grievances. Do you have a coherent, positive set of actions that we can now take without guilt or shame? I do not feel ashamed of being white, and I will not. I wasn't personally responsible for the racism of my forefathers at all. Do I have some personal accountability? Perhaps. You tell me what. Construct a positive course of action for redress of grievances that strikes most of us as reasonable. I think that's what he was trying to say. What is your positive course of action to, to, to make the situation equitable? And the response was kindergarten. Why the rage, bruh? You're doing all right, man. He even said it in the street, in street ways. Kindergarten. And it seems to be, it, to me, it totally underscores the intellectual incoherence of the social justice warriors and, the, and a lot of the people on the far left in general. Now, I'm not talking about economic issues because there's a very different thing between the left's economic agenda, which, again, has, has aspects of reasonableness to it, and their identity politics. The sum total of identity politics as a rule is, is toxic. And the reason it's toxic was underscored perfectly by Michael, Michael Dyson. Feel bad. Feel bad about it. You're guilty somehow, and you carry this guilt no matter what. And if you don't virtue signal about how you carry the guilt, if you don't go out of your way to apologize for the guilt that you carry around with you and you can't do anything about, and I'm giving you no positive, no positive course of actions, if, if I'm a fair-minded white person and I say to you, I understand that I've been the beneficiary of some form of white privilege in my life. What do you propose we do to do about it together as a positive course of action for redress of grievances? You have to come up with some sort of better answer than you're just an angry white man and you don't get it. That's really what he said to him. You're just an angry white man and you don't get it. Now let's put aside the absurdity of the fact that Jordan Peterson himself is an angry white man. You might not agree with Jordan Peterson on subjects, and you might not agree with him on the subject of political correctness. But let's be clear. It's not exactly, that's not exactly, you know, Mr. White Nationalist sitting on the stage there. It's a scholarly professor. Wasn't even Trump. You know, he wasn't saying that to Donald Trump. He was saying that to Jordan Peterson. Not exactly, you know, a foaming at the mouth, rabid, mean, spirited human being. So the... How he acted kind of underscored the absurdity of the entire social justice warrior project. The entire thing they seem to be saying is feel bad. Feel bad always. You're not feeling bad enough. You're not being sensitive enough. Be even more sensitive now. How could you not be even more sensitive? And there's never any course of action. There's never anything constructive. It seems to be the sum total of the entire, the entire argument from, the, from that quarter. Feel bad about everything and continually feel bad and constantly. So that's how it appeared to me. You know, it'd be interesting to see what anybody else thought. That's all for now. Bye-bye.